Hi everyone. Welcome back to another lesson in the motion series. This one focusing on gravitational potential energy. This video will draw on a lot of the concepts we've introduced, including work. Now gravitational potential energy, the basis behind it is that if you want to move an object from a low height, say a box here, an object that has mass from a low height to a higher height and that could mean from 10 meters in the air to 12 meters in the air from 0 meters to 10 meters from 0 meters to 0.1 meters to lift an object up you have to spend energy or you have to do work to that object and the higher you lift that object the more work you have to do and this is very simply felt by people uh, if you were to walk 10 meters to the right and then you were to climb 10 meters vertically, well, you'd find that the energy you expend climbing up is far greater than the energy you expend moving sidewards. And that's because moving sidewards, you've only got to overcome the frictional forces that are acting on you. But in moving up, you're doing work against gravity. Let's see how much energy it takes to lift a TV off the ground. So say we have a TV of mass 25 kilograms and we decide to lift it 1.1 meters off the ground like so. So to a height here of 1.1 meters. How much energy would it take to lift that at a constant speed so it comes to a rest 1.1 meters above the ground? Well the gravitational potential energy here is given by mgh. Now actually we'll solve it the easy way first. So all the while we were lifting it up at a constant speed there was the force of gravity working against it like that and the force of gravity was mg 25 times 10 or 250 newtons. So all the while it was being moved up gravity was working against that movement and the work done by gravity is equal to the force times the distance so negative 250 times 1.1 and that's equal to 275 negative 275 newtons so to get it to that height we must have done work that was equal to gravity's work so the work we did by lifting work lift was equal to 275 newtons that's the uh, that's the way we could solve it if we knew nothing about gravitational potential energy. But let's, let's look now at the gravitational potential energy method. Getting rid of all this. The object here has a different gravitational potential energy to the object up here. And the gravitational potential energy is basically how much energy the object would have if it fell from that height and hit the ground. Since the ground is here and the object is sitting on the ground the gravitational potential energy in this case is zero and that's because h in this formula is equal to zero so that's equal to m so 25 times g times zero that's the part that makes this zero the gravitational potential energy of that tv once it's been lifted to this height is equal to mgh which is 25 times 10 times 1.1 or 275 newtons. So since we've given this television 275 newtons worth of gravitational potential energy, we must have invested 200, oh sorry, no, that's, that's not newtons, that's joules, 275 joules. So since we've given this TV 275 joules worth of uh, gravitational potential energy. The work we must have done on it is equal to 275 newtons. Why do I keep saying newtons? Joules. If we dropped the box from this height, let's figure out the velocity of the, sorry, the box slash TV once it hits the ground. If it really does have 275 joules worth of gravitational potential energy when it is at 1.1 meters that means by the time it hits the ground 
it'll have 275 joules worth of kinetic energy. So kinetic energy down here is 275. And that must be equal to a half mv squared, so a half 25v squared. So we get 2 times 275 over 25 is equal to v squared. Take the square root of both sides. That comes to v is equal to the square root of 2 times uh, 275 over 25, or about 4.7 meters per second. Notice, if we kept lifting the, lifting the object higher, the height would become greater, the gravitational potential energy would become greater, and therefore the kinetic energy upon impact, impact would also become greater, and we'd get a higher velocity as it hits the ground. Let's verify these results by using our motion formulae. So we had v squared equals u squared plus 2as. The starting velocity is 0. The acceleration by gravity is 10. The displacement is 1.1. So v squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times 10 times 1.1. v is equal to the square root of 22 times 10. 22, 2 times 10 times 1.1. Square root of 22, which is, verifying our answer, around 4.7 meters per second. So either way we solve this, we get the same landing velocity. And if you're really paying attention, you might notice that we have a v squared term here, and we have a v squared term here. And that's because this motion formula actually relies on the idea of energy and work being done to an object. Let's do another question now, this time involving a shot put. Actually, we'll keep that question for the next lesson.